Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at how you can record the MIDI which is generated in complete control. So if you watch the lockdown learning series uh, back in the day when the world was, um, oh yeah, it hasn't really changed much has it? Anyway, if you watch that, you may have seen that in complete control. And apart from anything else, you've got an arpeggiator. And it's got some it's got some interesting bits and pieces in there. It's not just a straightforward arpeggiator because you've got swing and some sequences, etc. There's a bit of playing around. And as was requested by a viewer, you may want to record the MIDI that it creates because you might want to do something else with it. Often you find with arpeggiators. It generates an idea, but you want to maybe edit it or play around with it, etc. And it may not be doing exactly what you want. So what I've got set up here is something pretty straightforward with some value in there because we've got this sequence set up and swing. So if I just hold down a chord, you can hear this is uh, doing something a bit interesting. In fact, the other just now I uh, accidentally rested on the drum pad on there and got this nice rhythm. And then did this. So I sound like uh, a bit like the uh, soundtrack from Flash Gordon, isn't it? Which is by Queen, which obviously was clearly a formative part of my musical education when I was nine years old. Anyway, back to the point of this video, which of course is to record the MIDI output from this. So you can do this live. It's a bit more tricky, but we will look at doing it live and then look at doing it uh, not live. So it's much easier to do when it's not live. Oh, let's do it the difficult way first. Yeah, that's a great idea, isn't it? So the important thing here is complete control generates MIDI and it actually sends it back out to Cubase, which is quite handy because not everything does this. What you need is a MIDI track to record that onto. You can do it on an instrument track, but then you can get into all sorts of trouble. Once you've got the MIDI, you can do what you want with it. You can put it on an instrument track. So generally when I'm recording this kind of thing, I tend to do it on a MIDI track because it's far less likely to go wrong in some unpredictable way. So let's add a MIDI track. I'm going to call it Complete Arps. Now the output doesn't matter. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to send it to not connected so it doesn't screw anything up for us. But the important thing is from the input, so that's this top box here in the inspector, you need to pick complete control event output. That is the key to getting this recorded. If you've got it on anything else, it won't work. If you've got it on all MIDI inputs, it will work. But ideally you want to do it from this because if you have it set to all MIDI inputs, you will get the keys which are being played. So in this case, on my MPK Mini Mark III, and that as well. Whereas we just want to filter that out, so we're only going to get what Complete Control is sending out. So we won't get the hand-fisted foolery that I do on the keyboard. We'll just get what Complete Control makes of that. So I'm going to do that there. MIDI channel doesn't really matter because we're not going to do anything with it. We're not going to process it or send it anywhere. We'll do that later on. So once that's ready, you can then play complete control. Now here is where the slightly tricky bit comes because you need to record on this track while you're monitoring on this track. Now you can record on both of them at the same time, but then what will happen is you will end up recording the MIDI that you play on the keyboard and you'll end up recording this as well, which won't, won't be the end of the world. So we're gonna flick back over here and we're gonna change this from all MIDI inputs just to the MPK. So this is just my keyboard. If you've got a MIDI keyboard you're using, then you'll want to do that. Obviously, if you're using an on-screen keyboard or whatever, but take it off of all MIDI inputs. Now, this is only going to respond to the keyboard that I'm playing, and this is only going to respond to complete. But what we need to do is to be able to monitor this track while we record on this. And the best way to do that is to put monitor on. So now when I press a key on my keyboard, we can see we've got two things happening because on complete here, you can see that, but you can also see the MIDI coming out of complete is, is there and ready to go. So now if I hit record, you can see once doing that kind of thing. If I play a chord, you 
And it's done all that. Now, obviously, that's been obscured by complete control, but once we close it, the amazing reveal, we can see all of that MIDI that was generated has been captured. And now, if you want to, you can send that off to whatever instrument you want. You can edit it, play around with it, because after all, it's just normal MIDI data. So doing it live is totally possible. If you want to do it from a recording, it's actually simpler than that because you don't have to worry about whether or not you've got this record enabled or not because all you need to do is to make sure this is record enabled. So let's just go through doing that. I'm just going to delete this. Go back to this track. I'm going to take that off of monitor. Now I'm just going to record what I was going to play anyway. So... So there we've got a part which this will now play back. So when I play back, I can then just record enable this. This track is going to play back. It will get converted by complete control into MIDI arpeggios. And then this will record that. So now all I need to do is hit record. And you'll see it appear in real time. So this isn't something that only applies to complete control. If you've got any instrument or any set of effects, etc., which generates MIDI and appears, importantly, appears as a MIDI input source here, then you can record it using this technique and then you can obviously edit it, etc. As ever, I hope you found it useful. And if you have, please consider doing something to manipulate YouTube's algorithm, such as uh, leaving a comment or liking, subscribing, etc. Anything that can, um, that can help in some small way. That would be lovely. Anyway, I hope you found that useful and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.